Hi guys, it is Lychee. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I am an NG and hyphen stan. And in hyphen started off on a competition show on Mnet called Island. And I was just thinking about that when I was thinking about like new video topics. And I started thinking it would be kind of interesting to look at the history of idol competition shows. So that is what we're doing in the video today. We're gonna talk a little bit about like the history and evolution of these idol competition shows. I think that we should start with what is an idol competition show and why are they commonly popular? All right, so first of all, idol competition shows are TV programs that basically provide a platform for like singers or performers or other types of entertainers to showcase their talents. Usually the shows have like kind of a competitive format. Contestants usually compete against each other to win like money or fame or prizes or uh, debut in a group or something like that. Usually they're judged by like industry experts or other celebs that are like already in the industry or even the audience. Contestants usually go through a lot of training, um, shows, performances, competitions, lessons, all of that type of stuff. And uh, that can include singing, dancing, personality, all of those types of things. Basically, you're just kind of trying to prove that you have like what it takes to win or like get to the end. There's usually also some kind of like elimination format to it where the number of contestants gets less and less. So that's the general like information about what an idol competition show is. I was curious to find out if there was like something specific about Korea that made these types of idol competition shows like more popular there versus elsewhere. But once I started looking into it, I feel like probably no, not really. Competition shows honestly are globally popular. It seems like everybody, every like country and culture kind of likes to watch them. I would say in Korea, the only like real difference is because their entertainment industry is centered a lot on idols and um, pop music and they have k-pop and stuff like that that's like the only thing that makes it so that idol competition shows are typically based in korea but other than that like the competition show format is pretty global like when you look at western entertainment obviously we've had like american idol the voice um america's got talent all of those things are very popular as well and i would say that there's like a couple factors for competition shows being so like interesting to people in general so one would be that there's just like high entertainment value i think that competition shows can be like very dramatic and stressful because there's the whole idea of like oh you'll be successful or make it if you get to the end and then people are getting eliminated every week so you're always like trying to watch to see like what happens the second thing is that people can like identify and empathize with some of the contestants sometimes like they always, the producers always make the story something like, oh my god, like I came from so little or I like overcame these hardships and stuff and it was like all worth it because I get to be here and chase my dream and people just like seeing that, like especially if the contestant is someone who went through um, a personal struggle or issue that a viewer has gone through it makes them like you know very relatable and you want to see them win and then finally i think people just enjoy seeing talent like it's always nice seeing someone who's good at something like it's better in most cases than just like watching someone who's bad at something um i mean that can be entertaining too but like in a show format is probably kind of grating after a while. I think those are major reasons why competition shows in general seem to be like kind of popular with people. So anyways, we should go back to talking about the history of the idol competition shows in Korea specifically. So I split this into a couple different sections. So there's like three major eras, I guess, kind of splitting it somewhat by decades here. But first, starting off at the very beginning, Basically, the first idol show that I could really find that got popular in Korea is called Star King. It was really the first show to like introduce this competition show aspect in Korea. One of the things that was very innovative about it was it was like a variety entertainment, basically. They had an open door policy for the contestants, which basically means like they weren't saying, oh, you specifically need to be a singer or you specifically need to be like a dancer or a comedian or something else like it was just kind of like a free-for-all in terms of anyone who thinks they're talented at entertaining people just come and audition and show up and 
um, the variety of contestants was like very interesting. So basically this one was like the most proof of concept basic early show that let people combine entertainment and the talent competition idea. But anyways, after that show Star King, this kind of like started opening the floodgates and there was more like popular shows. All of the core like formats, challenges, uh, ways of showcasing talent all came from like this era. There was also some amount of like, oh, now entertainment companies can kind of like scoop up idols who have a little bit of a fan base and exposure through reality TV. And this is something that ramps up extremely crazily to present day. So keep that in mind. 2010s. This kind of is where everything exploded a lot more because reality TV became very popular. So before, I would say like in the 2000s, it was more so like, it seemed to be more like the competition shows were more like scripted. Like you would kind of go in and like know that that person was playing a character. They wouldn't like show everything that they were going through. And it was like, not like reality TV format, but now with reality TV, there was like, a new expectation of being very like authentic off the cuff moments like obviously there's producer input and stuff like that but it wasn't like to this level or viewers didn't like really expect that much raw stuff to be happening on camera like before this korean television mostly was like scripted dramas and variety shows and talk shows and stuff so this was just kind of like a new style of TV, honestly. So in terms of reality idol competition shows, the first one that most people say is called Superstar K. The show premiered in 2009. It was really, really popular and I think like cultural phenomenon based on what I have read. So basically another thing that I forgot to mention was that like even in the early shows, most people who were contestants had to have some kind of like already connection with some sort of entertainment agency to pull strings to get them onto the show. But one of the most innovative things for Superstar K was that you didn't need anything. Like literally someone could walk off the street and audition. And that was like a very innovative concept in 2009. So uh, another like aspect to this was like, oh, an undiscovered individual could eventually make it to the end and just be like super famous so that was also like pretty exciting to people at that time it was just like an ordinary person chasing their dreams so yeah it, it was just cute there were obviously a lot more shows like the voice did like a korea version which obviously became popular and then there was one specifically called like k-pop star k-pop star was kind of unique because it started like accepting international contestants coming onto the show and the voice korea like did the opposite i guess of what those very early ones did where the early shows like i said they were like oh you don't just need to be a singer you need to have stage presence and looks and stuff like that basically like by that point 20 30 years later it was already like so baked in that it was actually innovative to go backwards and say actually let's just focus on your singing voice. Like we can't see you, um, we don't care about that. Just like we're listening to the voice and if your voice is good, then we're gonna turn around or whatever. Literally all it takes to be innovative sometimes is just doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing. So overall, the innovations of this era, one is definitely the reality show aspect of it. It let people connect to the contestants a lot more because you felt like it was more authentic and genuine and all of that. The second thing is that there was like even more emphasis on open auditions. So like I said, people could just like walk in off the street and that was like a very exciting thing because um, we have so much Nepo baby discourse and stuff, but this was like in also the early days of social media. So the whole like big idea was, oh my God, what if there's so many like undiscovered people who just never had a chance and now it's like the true talented people who are coming up to the top. So that was really a cute idea. I think as we see today, it's just not really that true. Like connections still help you a lot, but you know, people were optimistic at that time. And finally, also tying back to the point about social media, just because there was all of this like new technology, some of these shows also started incorporating like audience votes in addition to, you know, your classic panel of three judges who are usually like, you know, a mean one, a nice one, and then a reasonable one. Now you also have like some sort of component of audience vote. So you can definitely start having like fan favorites. And that starts making the audience like way more invested too, because when you can like 
actually somewhat affect the outcome that gives you an incentive to go and like tell your friends or coworkers or random people about it and like promote your faves and all of that. So probably that also like had a bunch of effects that we can't even get into, but it, it definitely started in this era. All right, so the final stuff, I will say like 2010s up until basically today, modern era. My general impression of this section, I think the biggest theme is like globalization slash internationalization for K-pop. We had 2012 Psy Gangnam Style literally just went crazy. You did not survive 2012 if you didn't hear this song. Like everybody knows this song. This was pretty much like millions of people's first impression of what K-pop is. And then obviously throughout the 2010s decade, BTS became just like a crazy global phenomenon. This really kind of opened the gates for K-pop. I would say like between those two, obviously there was a lot of other factors, but these two acts like really stand out to me in terms of people who pioneered like global recognition for K-pop and made it into like the force that it is today. This also goes hand in hand in an interest in Korean culture in general. Like it's not just the idol groups, but um, brings along like the K-dramas, the food, the culture, all of that became like more cool and interesting to people. It definitely just increased Korean soft power in general. Okay, so back to the global idol competition shows. I think the two examples I wanna talk about, one is Island, cause obviously in Hyven's my fave, and two is Produce 101, because I think that's like possibly the most popular like girl group modern idol competition show that I can think of in recent years. So Produce 101 was from 2016. Basically it had trainees from a bunch of different like entertainment groups and they were trying to do like a temporary pop-up like project group that was just like the Produce 101 idols for like a little bit, but it was always meant to be a temporary group. And what was really interesting about this was like, these were professional trainees, but not just from Korea. They actually like purposefully tried to get trainees from all these other countries. I think including trainees from different cultural backgrounds really showed that K-pop is trying to become very global and accepted in countries around the world and they're trying to be like diverse and have some sort of global reach. Again, the voting systems just like went up another notch. Um, viewers everywhere can participate, influence the outcomes and vote for their favorite trainees. Again, this is another thing where this is like a huge catalyst for people getting more of their communities into K-pop as well because it's something that they actively do and want to talk about. So like I said, like the voting, the regular performances, the reality format, like I think Island had something like 24 seven live cams of the common areas and stuff that people could check in on while the show was airing. So like all of these things were present before, but basically like, you know, went to another level with this. I think the new introduction was really like the focus on globalization. I think this is a good move, honestly, it helps like all kinds of K-pop fans see themselves represented more in the industry. And it's not as quite as big of a barrier and culture shock when you're trying to stand like fully Korean groups and stuff like that, because sometimes there's just things that like you don't necessarily relate to. But I think because of this focus, K-pop's like global reach and influence is just gonna continue growing even deeper. So yeah, I think that is the history of Korean Idol competition shows. It's really an interesting story because the shows like keep evolving and putting new formats, different talent focuses, uh, different interactive elements. And I think it is very interesting for audiences. I think for the future, I don't know like if this will be the next era or when the next era is going to show up because honestly, I see the globalization trend continuing for quite a while because we're still really possibly like in the early days of that. I think with advances in technology, there's possibly gonna be increasing like interaction or interactive sorts of elements. Like I heard of one K-pop group that I forgot the name right now, but um, they do everything with like blockchain voting from the fans. And I know that crypto is like a huge meme, but for some reason a different, this is, might be like a different video, but Koreans are deeply obsessed with crypto and blockchain still. Like it still has them by the throat. Don't really understand what's going on with that. But um, yeah, there is like a K-pop group that is pretty serious about letting its fans like 
monitor all the creative decisions and stuff. And if you've been on Stan Twitter for 0.3 seconds, you know that these stands literally think that they can run their faves careers better than any like entertainment company. So, you know, that's gonna be fun for us. Since the online internet experience is like, seems to be so crucial and central to the spread of K-pop, I feel like maybe something else that is like a skill that trainees need to develop is just like how to interact with fans better online. Like maybe you would rather as an entertainment company, like debut someone who's really good at doing like live streams often or something or posting photos or comments or videos or doing like those fan interactions more than someone who's like, oh, a technology phobe and is like, oh, I don't want to figure out how to go live and talk to my fans. But then like because of that, the parasocialness of the relationship with their fans is like less deep and therefore you can milk less money out of those fans. So um, kind of interesting to see if that like develops in some direction or obviously we do have some like early ideas like, oh, an AI idol or something like I think Espa low key tried to do that, but they weren't that good at it. So they rolled it back somewhat. Um, in the original ESPA pitch, I think that it was going to be like way more focused on the AI pieces, but they kind of gave up now. But yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. If you guys have predictions, leave them in the comments. Leave a like on the video. Um, let me know if you guys have other ideas for things that you want me to research or look into, and I'll definitely consider. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.